Howdy folks, welcome back to the shop. So today we're gonna work on the golf cart again, um, but what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to shim the primary wet clutch. Um, sometimes whenever you put a new belt on, or if you get a belt that's a little thicker than the other one, um, sometimes you have to re-shim the primary wet clutch to get you to what it really should be. So what I mean by that is, whenever you try to start up your cart, you should not be trying to move the cart at all i mean the cart should just sit there stationary it shouldn't be trying to move it or do anything and that's the problem i'm having right now so i put a new belt on um i've redid the secondary clutch in the previous video and now the belt's too tight and it's dragging and it's causing it to uh want want to move the cart while i'm trying to start it so that's what we're here to fix so what's supposed to happen is whenever that belt sits in the grooves right there there's supposed to be a gap on the side of the belt and the book says if it's less than 40 to reshim it and if it's more than 60 to reshim it so my goal is i'm going to shoot for right around 50 thousandths gap and that should be you know right in the middle of what the spec is so but that's what they want it so let's get on it and i'll show you how to shim the primary wet clutch all right so there's no way to drain this guy um, you can turn it down to where this this grommet here, but not really any fluid's going to come out because it don't really hold a lot. But so the first thing we need to do is take these three bolts out or these three nuts, and the heads of them are uh, seven sixteenths. And uh, don't take them completely out. Um, main reason is is there's springs behind here, so you don't want it to fly completely off. So I'm going to take this one off, or almost completely off. Same with this one and this one. And sometimes this is a little bit of a pain to get off. Um, there's an O-ring. It's on there. And it makes this kind of difficult. I'm going to go ahead and take all three of these out. Um, you just have to be careful. Like I said, it's spring-loaded there. And try not to lose the washers if yours has it. So, this can be a real pain. There it come. And the reason why I got gloves on is because it, you know, all the fluid that's in here. Like I said, there's springs behind there, so here's all the springs. All right, so the next thing we need to do is get these tabs bent down. All right, so the next thing we need to do is take this nut out. Um, this is a one inch. There is a tool that they sell that goes around these three bolts or these three studs here to loosen that nut. Um, I usually put a wrench in here and I usually use a, uh, a crowbar and usually boom it'll come right loose they aren't torqued very very tight so it's not crazy and then take this nut off and then this is your keeper if I can get a hold of it this guy here um, then after that this whole thing will slide off if I can get it to come you have to be careful because there's three ball bearings in here and that's what what the weights are there you go so that whole assembly comes off and then what we're really after is to take that off and then once that's off your shims are right here. There's one of them right there. Um, and you kind of have to fish them around this O-ring here and try not to damage that O-ring because that O-ring is what seals the shaft. All right, so there's two shims that are here already. I don't see any other shims there. So beforehand, we couldn't get anything in there. It wants us uh, between 40 and 60 thousandths. 
and I said we were going to shoot for 50. These shims do come in different sizes. All right, so I would recommend taking this O-ring out um, only because you might have to take this on a couple times, so it'll make it a lot easier. So <clears throat> the two shims that were in there, the one was, looks like it's a seven thousandths, and the other one is a twenty thousandths. So we're looking at shooting for fifty thousandths. So if we have a 27 thousandths in there, we need to add 50 to that. And that's where we're going to baseline our shimming. So, so basically that's 75 thousandths. So one of the things that I do is I have all these shims here. What we're going to do is, okay, that's a 20. That's a 20. And that's a five. So there's a five. And then we got the two that was in it. One was a 20. And the other one, would we say it was a 7. So we got a 5, a 7, and a bunch of 20s. So we need, what I say, 75 thousandths. I'm tempted to start off with 80. Um, and see what it looks like. One of the things that I like to do as well, and I think it's kind of good practice, is always use the thicker shims if you have to or uh, to start out with and then use the small shims to get you where you need don't put the small shims in if you don't have to so we got a five a seven and another 20 I don't have a 10,000 shim I, I didn't see one in the box here um, and these shims that I have here actually came off this engine originally so, like I said, we're going to start off with 80. Um, you know, it really would have been 77,000. So, I mean, 80 should be close enough. And we'll see what that looks like. All right, it pays to look. Um, I missed. There was a shim stuck inside here. So, this is another 20. So, it was 47,000. And we want to add 50 to it so that kind of changes what we're doing here so 47 plus to 50 gives us closer to a hundred so that's what we're gonna start off with we're gonna start off with a hundred so these are all 20 2 4 6 8 and 10 and we're gonna put those on all right so I figured I'd show you the sheet in the manual here so these shims are 19 down here and 19A. And if you look, you know, it says spacing shims, variable numbers, you know. But I just wanted to show you how the stack up is in this. Um, so what we're going to do is this hub here, what is 20A? 20A is the needle bearing. And that's not what I was looking for. I'm sorry. It was 15 and 16. So 15 and 16 are the floating flange sleeve. We're going to press it inside the hub um it's just it's hard to push in because you got this o-ring right here it's number 26 um but once you put that in there you shouldn't have to take it back off so let's uh let's get right here to it so here's what i mean is here's the, the housing and then here's the center of it and this is the hub that i was referring to um right here and there's a felt uh, washer or it's like a, a felt sleeve that goes in here and what that is is it's coated in oil to help with that bearing in there so that bearings a like a bronze bearing in here you can see it and then this guy goes in here and you got to be careful with this felt make sure you get it in there just right and then you work it just slow enough you can see and I can see all the way around that it went in and then this you got to push a little bit to get it go on that overing now once that's on there um, we can start putting this back on and then test fitting it for our shims all right and so here's what I mean so we got those shims in there that's the hundred thousands and we're not putting the overing in just yet now we should be able to take this 
and slide him up on line the slot or um, the splines up there and what I'm gonna do is finger tighten this nut just to hold it there because you don't want those ball bearings falling out or uh, you know the weighted bearings there so now once that's there let me wipe my fingers here we're gonna use a feeler gauge and go right beside here and I can tell you that is still pretty tight so what do we got I can barely even get a 30 in there yet so um, looks like we need to add a couple more shims and this is what I was meaning by that o-ring if you had that in there this would be a pain so we take us all back apart again and I say let's add the 20 and put this back on and see what we get all right I can already start to see a gap all right then we take our feeler gauge again and see I can get 30 in there but it's even still 30 is pretty tight so I'm gonna add the last two shims that I have and hopefully that's enough all right so you can see this is kind of a trial and error type thing um, you keep adding shims or taking away shims to get whatever you need and unfortunately it's an oily mess the biggest thing I recommend is to try to keep the oil off the belt while doing this because the belts have fibers in them you know and they're just cloth so they can soak up that oil in the belt and then your belts basically junk um, so oh there we go that's a lot better um, hopefully it got me above the 40 and it did it it's actually about 45 so it's it's a little on the tight side um, unfortunately that's all the shims that I have so I really can't shim it more than that um, so hopefully if I would spin this okay and there's what you want see the engine can turn free and it's not trying to move the belt so it's probably gonna be all right um, it's like I said I'd like it a little bit better but I don't have any of the other shims here so maybe I'll get some on order but one of the things too you've got to remember is once this belt seats in a little bit it's also going to make a little bit more slop so i think we're going to leave it as it is now and like i said you can see that the engine's spinning free without it trying to turn the uh, belt all right so now it's time to start putting everything back together so we're going to add all our shims back on first that's the first thing we're going to do and then this is an important one don't forget this o-ring so now the o-ring's in place and now you can just put the uh the whole clutch pack back on and um also add a little bit of oil in here to help it go over top of that o-ring is always a good idea and make sure you wipe all this stuff down because your greasy fingers and whatnot uh, you want to try to keep as little oil on that stuff as possible All right, it's lit up one. Don't forget your locking tab, and it is lined up or notched right. Put that guy in there and get your nut on there. All right, so this nut here gets torqued to 75 to 85 foot pounds. Um, I already did that, so the next thing to do is get these tabs bent over. And sometimes, just because of the angle, it's hard to get in here. Just get it tapped there and that's it for that so the next thing we want to do is make sure that these guys go in down in here and there is all three of them here they usually fall out whenever you take this stuff apart so it's pretty common make sure they sit all the way back um, and don't get cocked then there's also this guy here and you can see they go inside here so this in here was fell out 
So get that in there. And then the three springs. And one of the things you want to do before you put this back together is make sure that this lip here is cleaned up. Um, it'll help with getting the O-ring installed. The other thing I'm going to do is we're going to put a little bit of Vaseline around this O-ring to help it slide on a little bit better. And that O-ring, let me tell you, can be a pain. So these springs go in here, but they also line up to the studs or the uh, recesses in this cap. So I always start off with one, put it down in, get the other one lined up, and then get the third one lined up. And then uh, make sure they all good. And then try to squeeze it and get a nut on it. Get your washer and your nut on there to keep it from coming apart. Because it's a lot to hold and, and it's kind of a pain. All right, so these three nuts, once you get them in there, you want to tighten them down evenly. What you want to do is prevent it from kicking uh, this and causing the O-ring not to go on right. And then I usually just grab a hold of this guy or in here and uh, get this tightened up. Because these don't need to be crazy tight either. And that's it. Um, after you get that done, I would recommend a little bit of brake clean and wipe this all down. Like I said, you don't want any oil getting on that belt. And uh, next thing we need to do is put some fluid in it and uh, we are good to go. So to get some fluid in it, all it is is this little grommet hole. You pop it open like that. And so for filling this, I usually use a, a funnel with a hose on it and it calls for 12 ounces of the Hardy Davidson oil. Um, you know, you try to look that up and it's kind of hard to find what that oil is. A lot of people say you use 7590 gear oil. Some people say you use something else. Um, I see no problem with gear oil. I'll just bring you back once it's full and then we'll try to go for a test ride. All right guys, so I wanted to show you what it's supposed to do. You can see how the belt is uh, just sitting there while the engine's running, idling basically. So if you would tap the gas a little bit, you can see the wheels want to start to move. That's exactly the way it's all supposed to work. So with that said, um, that's how you properly adjust or shim the uh, primary wet clutch and uh, let's get it out in the yard and see what it does. Well guys, you see everything's back together, everything's outside, the, the uh, shimming the clutch ex helped extremely on that. Um, it's acting like it should. So I took and run it up the road and uh, did a few things and ran it around a little bit earlier today just to see if I had any more leaks. So. This is kind of at the end to both of these uh, videos that are together here in a way, but there's no leaks anywhere. So that's a major plus. So that was one of my bigger problems. Also, the thing definitely seems to pick up speed a lot faster than it did before. And um, I'm assuming that's redoing those little rollers and stuff. It's inside that secondary clutch and um, getting everything shimmed properly. It definitely acts completely different than what it did before. So this is a major plus. So with that said, I think engine trans wise now, hopefully crossing my fingers that this is finally done and I don't have to get in here and do anything for a while. So uh, why don't I start it up and run it around real quick so you can kind of see um, how it's doing.
one level. And let me tell you, this thing little whips around really good. It, it impresses me. So uh, definitely helped big time. So with that said, I thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please hit that like and subscribe button if you can. And until next time, take care.